Thank you for joining us, Friendship Christian Church Virtual Sunday School Class. Today we're in Isaiah chapter 41. We'll be beginning in verse 1, and this is lesson 92 of Isaiah. Now I've got some things I need to present to you before we get into that verse. Uh, you may want to get you something to write with. I've got some important dates to give you and some names. So the first thing is, though, chapter 41 is interesting. Fragments, fragments containing parts of this chapter were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, that were written. That these scrolls were written in the 3rd century B.C. The great Isaiah scroll is the best preserved of the biblical scrolls found at Qumran, that is where the Dead Sea Scrolls are, from the 2nd century B.C. And it contains all the verses in this chapter. Now what's important here is to know history. The Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar II, that's a Nebuchadnezzar that we know, that took Jerusalem into exile. He took Jerusalem into captivity between the years 605 and 586. He took the last of the captives out of Jerusalem into Babylon in 586. He died the 7th of October, 562 B.C. He was aged 80. Nabonidus, N-A-B-O-N-I-D-U-S, was king of Babylon from 556 to 539 BC. That's when Babylon fell to Cyrus, the king of Persia. In October 539 BC, the Persian king Cyrus took Babylon. He took the capital. He took all of their lands. He took the entire empire. And that empire contained modern-day Iraq, modern-day Syria, modern-day Lebanon, and modern-day Israel. Cyrus took all of it. Now, when we read chapter 41, Isaiah is seeing way out into the future from his time, way out in the future of his lifetime. If Isaiah wrote the book after chapter 39, which there's a lot of debate among theologians, whether he did or didn't, if he did, it would have been written before 680 B.C., as he was a prophet from 740 to 680 B.C., so you can see how that lined up with the dates of Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus. He was looking quite a ways out into the future when he's giving us this chapter. So that's what he's talking about in this chapter. He's talking about the conquest of Cyrus. So let's, uh, let's begin. Before we do, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for giving us your scripture, your word. And fathers, we go through your word. We just pray that you guide us and lead us by the Holy Spirit and that you bring us to proper conclusions. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Verse 1, be silent before me, you islands. Let the nations renew their strength. Let them come forward and speak. Let us meet together at the palace of judgment. The coasts, coastal lands all around the Mediterranean and the islands represent the nations of the world. The Lord challenged the nations that refused to accept him to be silent in awe and then move to renew 
their strength to coming to him. And he's telling them, go ahead and collect your, your best arguments. And let's see you plead your case as to why you shouldn't come to me. We see in this that the people of the islands, coastal lands, are to be quiet before the Lord. They have no argument. They have nothing worthwhile to say. We all, we all, shall stand before Jesus and be judged someday. The renewing of the strength must be in the Lord. We must come in the Lord. We will each have to account for ourselves in front of the Lord. Verse 2. Who has stirred up one from the east, calling him in righteousness to his service? His, he hands nations over to him and subdues kings before him. He turns them to dust with his sword, to windblown shaft with the bow. God is reminding the nations that it is he who brings people to power. It is he who brings people down out of power. The Lord is going to anoint Cyrus, the great king of Persia, to accomplish his righteous will by conquering Babylon in 539 B.C. Cyrus founded the Persian Empire and ruled it from 550 to 530 B.C. Cyrus came from the east of Babylon. It appears that God called him for the task and empowered him with the ability to do just that. It was not his righteousness. It was not Cyrus' righteousness, but it was the righteous power of God that God gave to Cyrus. Verse 3. He pursues them and moves on unscathed by a path his feet had not traveled before. Cyrus accomplished his conquest with great ease, great ease, in territories he'd never been visited before. It appears he had no trouble at all with the terrain that others had thought impossible to pass over. We must remember that this path was not easy because God had directed him it was easy. We have learned in our lessons that God makes whoever he wants to be ruler. God is in control. Verse 4. Who has done this and carried it through calling forth the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, with the first of them and with the last, I am he. With the first of them and the last means, God existed before history and will exist after it. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He says, I am he. It is legitimate to translate two Hebrew words, thus representing I am. This is the messianic title appropriated by Jesus as explicit testimony to his deity. You see, Jesus is God in the flesh. Look at John chapter 8, verse 58. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. The title came originally from God's self-revelation to Moses, and we get this in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. 
This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Now we know the answer to this. No idol, no idol God could have done this for Cyrus. This is from the one true God. God is the first and the last. The fact that the first and the last was mentioned shows the eternity of God. And then we get a block of three, verses five through seven. Instead of turning to the Lord when they saw his anointed one, Cyrus approaching the nations, they turned to themselves, to each other, to, to help them make more idols. Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, before we get into 5 and 7, we'll stop here, and we'll pick it up there next time. But you do want to read ancient world history. Go back, read about these kings and these dates that I've given you. Read. Read the Word. Read chapter 41. And then we'll come back and discuss it next time in Lesson 93. Let us pray. Fathers, we continue to study as we continue to read. We just pray that you guide us and lead us by the Holy Spirit and help us connect the dots. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and may we all go in peace.